Hello, this is Aaron Soupmasher reporting for Steel Monkey Radio. The following is a work of fiction, designed for entertainment purposes, just like all of Steel Monkey Radio. Don't take it seriously, we don't want you getting hurt. Some listeners may find this disturbing, you have been warned. With that in mind, on with the show. Welcome to the fourth guided experience, brought to you on behalf of the program. By now, You should be making progress on your rehabilitation, and your spine should be healing well. If you are experiencing any ill effects, please pause this recording now and discuss this with your amelioration technician. Now, sit reasonably comfortably and insert your ear screw. In and out. In and out. Very good. Keep breathing. Keep breathing. Keep breathing. Keep breathing. Keep breathing, 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 keep breathing. Very good. Now, I'm going to count down from five to one, and when I do, you will be nothing. Five. You feel movement inside your body. Four. Your skin starts to bulge. Three. A spider greater than any you've ever seen tears through your flesh. 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 Hell for flesh. Two. You see chunks of your viscera falling from an abdomen the size of a football. One. You are nothing. You are the void. Now, you find yourself being led down a lavish hallway by an immaculately dressed and coiffured butler. Fine art hangs on the walls in beautiful gilt frames. There is a smell of fine, polished woods. The carpet beneath your feet feels of excellent quality. The butler shows you into a large, richly decorated room on the left. Your entertainment, sir, he says as he closes the door behind you. A large, naked figure rises from an exquisite sofa. He seems to be crusted in strange orange grease at every fold of flesh. He has no neck, and the yellow irises of his eyes, along with his strange gait, make you question his humanity. He burps richly in your face, and it smells strongly of meat. He looks deeply into your eyes. Every part of you fights the urge to attack. 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 A crooked smile forms on his face, and he speaks a single word. Gallenshire. You go limp and fall to the floor. Take it to the bed, he says and you see the butler take your arms and drag you to the large four-poster bed. He heaves you onto it and positions you face up in the middle of the bed. You can go, the yellow-eyed grease man says to the butler. You lay there in horrified anticipation of what will happen next. Body limp and unresponsive, mouth locked wide open. You hear the door close as the butler leaves. You feel the bed next to you dip as the yellow-eyed man climbs clumsily onto the bed and mounts you. The orange grease seems to ooze from his folds, and you see now the large pores in his skin. The more you see of him, the more you question, 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 so question his humanity. The palatial nature of the room feels lessened by the disgust you feel for this affluent oleaginous being now sitting on your stomach and leering down at you. His right hand moves forward 
and hooks your nose with two fingers. You feel his fingers pushing deeper and deeper into your nostrils. You are in agony as you hear your skull crack, and still he pushes against you. This is the report of George Elkins, Amelioration Technician 12114, on test subject Bravo Alpha 7, designation Raven. Subject has completed the first three guided experiences, uh, new spine has taken well, no signs of a rejection. As is normal with these experiments, the skin isn't growing back over it, and there is some discoloration in this area. Rehabilitation goes well, medical exams all passed, vital signs are good, LP levels excellent. I would have to agree with the induction agents, this subject does seem to be ideal for the program. I don't believe I've encountered a subject who's managed such a clean and complete spinal expression since Alpha Sigma 12, though hopefully this one won't prove so destructive to the facility, staff and other subjects. The continued success with the ear screw and concurrence medication means most of the subjects are much more docile of late. Report ends. As he continues to vomit into your mouth, vomit into your mouth, vomit into your mouth, mouth, mouth. It starts to overflow into your eyes. The acid in his bile burns you, and still you cannot move. You feel utter repulsion at the being that is defiling you. Now, I'm going to count down from five to one, and when I do, you will have destroyed your captor. Five, reach out with your mind. Four, grasp the creature's brain tightly. Three, you feel yourself wrapping it tightly. Two, squeeze it tighter. Two, feel it bulging beneath your grip. Two, feel every memory this creature has ever had. Two, its childhood, every love, every hate, each taste of food, each subordinate it has choked to death for pleasure and then eaten the remains. Two, see the panic in its now bleeding eyes. One. With one final squeeze, you crush the creature's brain to a fine slurry. Doesn't that feel wonderful? As your abuser slumps to one side and falls off the bed, you start to feel strength coming back to your limbs. You cough up the last of the vomit that had been poured into you and stand up on unsteady legs. After a few minutes, you feel much more stable and you're ready to make your escape, make your escape. Opening the door, you peer cautiously out into the hall. Seeing no one around, you carefully make your way down the hallway. The hall grows darker and darker. Soon you are having to cling to the wall to find your way. You feel a chill in the air. After a few minutes, in almost complete darkness, you come out to some kind of large office overlooking a huge open warehouse. You pass a large leather chair and approach the window. You look down into the dimly lit space below. An area the size of an aircraft hangar stretches off into the blackness. Endless rows of metal tables line the floor. It seems that there are bodies on each table and human-sized, insectoid-like creatures work away over them. They're too far away to see exactly what they're doing, but something about all of this fills you with utter dread. Feeling a presence behind you, you turn around. Standing silently in the far corner of the room, you see a nun. She stands uncharacteristically quietly. Her habit is torn and dirty. The dried blood has started to peel and flake from the skin of her cheeks. Her eye sockets are hollow. Her habit is dirty. She holds her rusty saw in one hand and puts the finger of her other hand to her lips for silence. This concludes the fourth guided experience brought to you on behalf of the program. You may now remove your ear screw.
This has been a recording of Stone Monkey Radio. Stone Monkey Radio is written and created by Jane Eris Magnet. Join me on YouTube as Maniac Janiac, on Twitter as at Maniac Janiac, and on SoundCloud.com as Jane Eris Magnet. Thank you for joining us. Join us again sometime. And we'll arrange to have someone vomit into your mouth for hours and hours and hours. <sighs>